It was probably late spring when I was looking for a processor to run the electronic load. I was astonished to see almost everything out of stock. And with expected delivery dates into 2023 for the ones I was interested in. So I had to expand my search a bit. I did want to stick to the DS pick parts. That's the ones I'm a bit familiar with. That's when I ran across the DSPIC 33CH 256MP508 on sale at Aero. I'd never used the DS pick 33CH parts but it looks like a dual core version of the CK series. Maybe a better description is two processors sharing the same IO pins, but it looks like it would work. Maybe a bit more complicated to work with. But why, when most everything else is out of stock, is this normally six to seven dollar processor on sale for two dollars and seventy cent? One thing I really do like about Arrow is that a date code is listed for most things it matters for. And these processors are listed as the 49th week of 2018 at a minimum. So a bit of age on them. So looking up the errata sheet, there are three versions of silicon for this processor. And the errata sheet was updated with the A1 revision in about the middle of 2020. Which I think would mean processors made the 49th week of 2018 would be the original A0 silicon. That would be a reason for a discounted price. But $2.70 is, again, just too good a deal to pass up. And really, the only issue of the A0 silicon that will cause me a problem is the I2C module being unusable. But the I2C can be done in software. It's all low-speed stuff I'm going to use it for. So that issue can be overcome with just a bit of extra work. I'm going to give them a try. And I might get lucky and get the plus side of the 1849 date code. Well, I ordered 10, and they all have a date code of 1849. A bit disappointing, but I kind of should have expected it. Optimism does have a downside, but I won't know for sure what revision the silicon is till I can hook one up to the programmer. And for that, I'm going to need a PC board, and I haven't even started laying that out yet. On the other hand, if I hadn't already laid out the schematic with some I2C parts, I would eliminate the I2C use altogether. But I've spent so much time picking out the parts, it will be faster to do a software I2C interface than redo the schematic. At least I think it will. I finally had some time to lay out the PC board. This is my first four layer board, so it is taking quite a bit of time. Not that I'm some kind of speedster at laying out two layers, but this is going noticeably slower. Even after I get it all laid out, I'm going to wait a couple of days and come back and look it over again very closely. See if I can catch any errors. The PC boards have arrived. I've had the chips for a couple of months now. I can finally see if I got just a good deal or if I got a great deal. First thing I will do is put the voltage regulators on the board. Even though the microprocessor will only use 3.3 volts, I'm going to install all the regulators. some LEDs to indicate power on, and a couple of connectors. I'll check all the voltage rails, making sure all the voltages are good before installing the processor, or any of the other chips. 80 pins to solder. Didn't need 80, but no 60 pin parts in stock. I think I've become addicted to the solder paste. Board's a bit on the cool side. I'll heat it a bit, and that will make applying the solder paste very easy. These are pretty large pads, but I'm probably overdoing it with the paste. I seem to almost always add a bit too much, but I'd rather add too much than not enough. I 
I'll get the chip aligned as close as I can. That looks good. I'll use the largest hot air tip I have. Temp is set to 800 degrees with an airflow of 8%. So much better than using a soldering iron. Yeah, a bit too much solder paste. I'll put some flux on the pins and just use a soldering iron to remove the excess. It will still end up being quicker than soldering the IC with a soldering iron. I'll get the excess solder removed and put the bypass caps in place, install some connectors, and then it's go time. Okay, I've got the connectors on that I need, power, connection to display board, and programming jack. First I want to see if the board is going to fit on the back of the display board. I don't want to make a new case, that's for sure. There's definitely no extra room to spare, but I think that will work. And this way my current sense amp will be very close to the current shunt. Of course I can't really work on it or test it with it tucked in there like that. So I've made a little extension cable so I can get it out to work on. No keying on this cable, so I have to make sure it's plugged in correctly. I was sloppy on the pin layout, so if I plug it in backwards, I'll run 12 volts in on a pin of the display microcontroller. Time to hook up the programmer and see what I have. Just a tiny bit of code done up. Let's see if anything works. Well, that's a good sign. And it was just a good deal. It's A0 Silicon. But I do have the programming interface wired up correctly. That's always a good feeling when it sees the processor. Have to say, I'm just a bit disappointed though. I shouldn't be. It's what I should have been expecting. But a 1 there in the device revision ID would have made me very, very happy. Now to find the time to work on it. Hopefully the DSPIC33CH series is not too much more complicated than the CK series. Though I do have some reading to do. I'm sure the two cores have a communication process. That will be something new. And it's always good to learn something new. Thank you for watching.